Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we took on Yuxi at Lake Acuity near Snowpoint City. I wanted that to keep rhyming, but I suppose it wasn't meant to be. This time, there is but one more Lake of Sinnoh that we have yet to revisit and challenge the Lake Guardian at. Lake Verity near Twinleaf Town. So what the heck are we doing in Canalave City? Well, this fight probably isn't gonna take up much of this video's runtime. And I did say that when all this universe ending business cooled down, we would come back to the Canalave Library and read the books on Sinnoh's myths and legends like Cynthia said that we should. There is a lot of backstory, not only for Sinnoh and for this story in general, but just for the world of Pokemon as a whole. And if you've never read these books before, you are in for a treat if you have any appreciation for the lore of the Pokemon world, because it's pretty darn cool. Let's get started. It's better than you think it is. First book today is Sinnoh Myth. Betray not your anger, lest question mark, question mark, question mark will come. Weep not with sorrow, or question mark, question mark, question mark will draw near. When joy and enjoyment come natural is the very air, that is happiness. Let such be blessed by the hand of master question mark, question mark, question mark. Those words were often spoken as customary. I'm very glad I'm not an ancient because that sounds very awkward to say in basically every customary sentence. Sinnoh region's mythology. Long ago when Sinnoh had just been made, Pokemon and humans led separate lives. That is not to say they did not help each other. No, indeed they did. They supplied each other with goods and supported each other. A Pokemon proposed to the others to always be ready to help humans. It asked that Pokemon be ready to appear before humans always. Thus to this day, Pokemon appear to us if we venture into tall grass. We have an actual explanation for why we catch Pokemon, that it was Pokemon themselves that proposed that as being the way that things are. Yeah, for something that a lot of people say is never explained that we're doing slave trading and all that, I can definitely appreciate that book. Sinnoh's Myth, very different from Sinnoh Myth, clearly. Three Pokemon there were. Into the lakes they dove, deep, deep, drawing no breath. Deeper, deeper they dove, into suffocating depths they dove. Deeper than deepest, they alight, from the lake floor they rise, bearing with them the power to make vast lands they rise again. Veilstone's Myth. A young man, callow and foolish in innocence, came to own a sword. With it, he smote Pokemon, which gave sustenance with carefree abandon. Those not taken as food, he discarded with no afterthought. The following year, no Pokemon appeared. Larders grew bare. The young man, seeking the missing Pokemon, journeyed afar. Long did he search, and far and wide too, until one he did find. Asked he, why do you hide? To which the Pokemon replied, if you bury your sword to bring harm upon us, with claws and fangs, we will exact a toll. From your kind, we will take our toll, for it must be done. Done it must be, to guard ourselves and for it, I apologize. To the skies, the young man shouted his dismay. In having found the sword, I have lost so much. Gorged with power, I grew blind to Pokemon being alive. I will never fall savage again. This sword I denounce and forsake. I plead for forgiveness, for I was but a fool. So saying, the young man hurled the sword into the ground, snapping it. Seeing this, the Pokemon disappeared to a place beyond seeing. Sinnoh Folk Stories Pick clean the bones of Pokemon caught in the sea or stream. Thank them for the meals they provide, and pick their bones clean. When the bones are as clean as can be, set them free in the water from which they came. The Pokemon will return fully fleshed, and it begins anew. There lived a Pokemon in a forest. In the forest, the Pokemon shed its hide to sleep as a human. Awakened, the human dons the Pokemon hide to roam the villages. There once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. There were once humans and Pokemon that ate together at the same table. It was a time when there existed no differences to distinguish the two. A horrific myth. Look not into the Pokemon's eyes. In but an instant, you'll have no recollection of who you are. 
Return home, but how? When there is nothing to remember. Dare not touch the Pokemon's body. In but three short days, all emotions will drain away. Above all, above all, harm not the Pokemon. In a scant five days, the offender will grow immobile in entirety. The original story. In the beginning, there was only a churning turmoil of chaos. At the heart of chaos, where all things became one, appeared an egg. Having tumbled from the vortex, the egg gave rise to the original one. From itself, two beings the original one did make. Time started to spin, space began to expand. From itself again, three living things the original one did make. The two beings wished, and from them matter came to be. The three living beings wished, and from them spirit came to be. The world created, the original one took to unyielding sleep. So we have a lot of themes addressed here. We have the creation of Dialga and Palkia, the creation of the Lake Trio, the creation of the universe itself, the fact that humans do indeed eat Pokemon similar to how we eat meat in the real world and there are ethics dealing with this within this world. We have the fact that humans and Pokemon were once one in ancient times and in fact, in the Japanese version of Platinum, it goes a step deeper than that, saying not only did Pokemon and humans once eat at the same dinner table and exist as one until Pokemon proposed the allegiance that they serve humans, but you also have the fact that in Japan, they mentioned that there was once a time where it was socially acceptable for humans and Pokemon to marry. Yeah, a lot of depth to that. Back in Lake Verity, I am going to miss this music when it's gone. We're not gonna be hearing it again for a while, possibly even for the rest of the series. And I, despite all the catching difficulties that we had, I enjoyed making the last two videos a lot. A lot of uncertainty to them. I didn't know what was gonna happen. It was really fun to see just what would work on which legendary Pokemon. And I got to hear this music multiple times because we went to these locations. And this is the last one. Before us is Mesprit. Believe it or not, you don't need to save. Emil, that was Mesprit, wasn't it? You've accomplished what I'd asked you to do at the Canalave Library. I asked you to get data on the Pokémon of the lake, and you did. But it didn't provide any answers about the mysteries of evolution. I still don't know why some Pokémon evolve and others don't. So what you're saying is, me going out of the way to go after these lake Pokémon only made your research more inconclusive, thus making your studies worse. Thanks, buddy. Ultimately, it only deepened the mystery. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Having mysteries to solve, that adds to my enjoyment. At least one of us is happy. Emil, why don't you chase after Mesprit? To me, it seemed as if it wanted to play with you. If you were to use the PokeEdge app marking map, you'd be able to track the movements of Pokemon. Go on, Emil. I'm sure you will keep meeting countless Pokemon and people. Those encounters will keep thrilling you in their own special ways. I hope you'll enjoy that experience. Take care, Emil. Rowan is telling us that he hopes we have fun chasing after a roaming legendary Pokemon, one of the most detested mechanics in the entire series. Rowan, I took you to be a better person than that. I really did, but I see that I was wrong now, and that is just downright disappointing. But what he was saying is true. Roaming legendaries, the way that these work is that every time you go to an adjacent area, so will the roaming Pokemon, except in rare occasions where it'll have its location reshuffled. If you use Fly to go to another area, then it too will reshuffle its location completely. However, big plus that I have to give Sinnoh on, a big improvement that was made to this mechanic. Like Rowan was saying, without having to encounter it even one time, we can see exactly where it is by using the marking app. It was in the same place as me and I went away from it, damn it. Okay. Uh, come on, come back here, come back here, please. I'm gonna be here a while, just saying. Their puzzle effect wore off, dang it. In the same place as it. Mesprit is level 50 when encountered, so what you wanna do is have a Pokemon that is lower level than it, hopefully higher level than everything else that normally appears in the area, cast up a repel, and run around.
Mesprit, the being of emotion, is that one Pokemon that seems to be in every trio. The one that is not offensive, not defensive, but a hybrid of whatever the other two are. And it doesn't stand out as much as the other late guardians because of this. It doesn't have horrible stats by any means, but Yuxi and his elf just perform better at one thing rather than just simply being okay at both things. It also doesn't help that by level up moves, very little of what it learns is all that good. It is going to be attacking with Swift, Future Sight, and Extra Sensory unless you use a TM. And if you want to have a powerful user of that Psychic TM, you might as well just use his elf. Mesprit, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't like you. I think you are an incredibly charming Pokemon, and you've had some sweet moments in the story up to this point. But you just don't stand out that much in battle. If you want something that Mesprit is definitely first place in, in my opinion, that portrait in its bio that we're seeing right now is definitely first place out of the three. Because, man, I laughed when I saw this picture for the first time. I like it a lot. Um, so, yeah, Mesprit being a roaming legendary Pokemon. This is why I taught Acrobat Mean Look. Being the awesome speed demon that he is, he was able to outspeed Mesprit and lock it into battle with Mean Look. If Mesprit knocks out Acrobat, however, it will be able to run away once more. So make sure that whoever is using Mean Look is well healed up, if you have any Pokemon that can do that. All around a very good move to have, if only for the time being. Um, I'm certainly hoping that it doesn't do more damage than I think it will, because if it knocks out Acrobat, then the Mean Look is now null and void. Um, what's nice though, is that even though you would expect it to have some kind of psychic type attacking move, it doesn't. It has Future Sight in its moveset, yeah. But even though Future Sight is psychic type, the damage that is actually done from it is typeless for whatever reason, so... No weakness in Acrobat, no same type attack bonus, nothing. I can just take the hits like a champ. Also, you might have noticed that it has Lucky Chant in its moveset. As long as it's doing that, you don't have to worry about random criticaling it. Yeah, I really could have used that against Yuxi. Or I really could have used that with Yuxi using it on... I'm not really sure how it works. The point is, that's one way that Mespert wins, is in knowing Lucky Chant where Yuxi and his elf did not, especially Yuxi. Um, some people might be wondering if they think legendary Pokemon that roam are so annoying, why don't I just use my Master Ball on it? The main reason being is that Platinum is rich with roaming legendaries. We have not seen even the half of them in Fighting Vespert right now. There's a lot more ahead of us, and my general rule of thumb is use the Master Ball on the final roaming legendary that you haven't caught so that the last one is easy and you do the least amount of work you can possibly get away with in trying to catch these Pokemon, because they are very time consuming. Besides, Acrobat has proven itself surprisingly bulky against it. Seriously, that just seems to be the running trend that every attack that I think Acrobat can't survive, it does. I know that Mesprit's special attack stat isn't really all that special, but isn't all that special? There I go with some consciously making buttons again. But I thought Future Sight would do a lot more damage than it actually did. So I can just keep Acrobat alive. I keep stalling out. We're wondering where all these balls came from. Snow Point City, Pokemon Mart is your friend. They have basically everything that I recommend. And yeah, I think at this point we're just going to try snaring it with a bunch of different balls. That's really all I had to say about it, and it still hasn't been caught. Big surprise. Here we go. Random thought that has me a little bit curious. And this would be good to know, so I'll put text on screen right now with the answer to this, because I'm sure I'm not the only person who has thought of this. If I begin a battle with a wild Pokemon outdoors when it's light out, but during the battle, the in-game clock transitions to a late enough time where it's considered nighttime. Does the Dusk Ball work to its fullest effect even though the battle background won't change mid-battle? I don't know, and because I don't know, I'm not wanting to resort to using my Dusk Balls right away, because, quite frankly, I could be mine as well using Pokeballs, for all I know. Oh, what? Ah! Thought I had it there for a moment. That is the best I have done so far. Wait. Oh my god. I didn't realize it. Mesprit really is charming. Yes! Oh, Mesprit. I didn't realize you had that in your starting moveset, even though you used it before now. I didn't put two and two together. You really are charming. Mesprit, okay. It's official. More than ever before, you need to be made part of my collection of Pokemon. 
Now that I know that you are playing off of my words to make your own bad puns without being able to speak human language, you are genius. Just for that, let's try it. Let's try a dust ball. Do it. One. Wasn't meant to be. Oh, and I probably better give this some verbal acknowledgments. Similar to Yuxi and Azelf, you do need to go to Verity Cavern to register Mesprit as seen in your Pokedex. If you're going for a completion, what Rowan said was true. All you have to do is talk to it in Verity Cavern. You never even have to battle it. You just have to talk to it once and it is registered. Even though we've seen it in cutscenes before and that didn't count for some reason, even though it did for Dialga and Palkia. Now, onto the how you say ball chucking. It really is playing games with me, guys. I have used up dang near every Ultra Ball I've got. Not a single one of them has ever gotten past two shakes. It likes giving me just enough shakes to make me think that I have hope in catching it so that I will keep trying. See, look at that, it gave me two as soon as I said that, which is the most that I've done up to this point, like I said. Well, tied for the most, but still. Only four left. One. No. One. This is my last Ultra Ball. How well will you perform? High performance Pokeball, my hind end. So my situation right now is that I've used more than 30 Ultra Balls, and I've had to heal, so it's probably been about 40 or so turns at this point. For all I know at the time of recording this, my Dust Balls could might as well be Pokeballs. I'm thinking our best bet is the Timer Ball. But if this doesn't work, I think I might try some Odd Balls. Let's see. Didn't even shake. Couldn't even give me that much. Continuing to use your Future Sight, very slowly chipping away at my HP. It's kind of comedic that I'm using my Acrobat to tank something that's not a fighting type. Not me to select my attacks there, that could have been really bad because I have not saved since I have begun this recording. Uh... Yeah, let's try it. Pokeball, why not? I'm probably not gonna use these things for dang near anything else in the rest of my journey. I think I only have these because that news reporter in a uh, Salazio Town! <laughs> oh man, my heart skipped a beat right there when it shook twice. <laughs> Well, uh, my only Pokeball that I've used has been equal in effectiveness to the best of those 33 Ultra Balls I chucked at it. Nest Ball? Why not? Might as well pad out the number of turns, even though I think after a certain point the Time Ball stops being useful. I don't remember exactly how it works, because it's different from generation to generation! No! <laughs> Man, okay. The Odd Balls are working out for me. They are working out. I'll try them. You know what? If they're working for me, that it did work better than any Ultra Ball I ever checked, and I know how the chances work. I know that there's not any sort of button combination that you press, and contrary to urban myths, yelling stuff into the microphone doesn't increase your chances of catching the um, Pokemon or anything like that, even though I always get people telling me, no, Chugga, you need to press B, or hold A and B, or shout gotcha into the microphone, or hold your DS upside down, or... Uh, perform the high wire act, juggling hammers while throwing the Pokeball. Like, I have heard so many myths at this point that it wouldn't even surprise me if some of, if all of those are real. Uh, we'll try, we'll try the net ball. Yeah, might as well. First one gave me two shakes, second one gave me three shakes. Logically, that means this one should break immediately. Okay, yeah. Screw you too, Mesprit. Love you. Really do. Really feeling that love. After you've guarded me my entire life, I am but your plaything now that I am grown. Tyra Ball again. We've padded out the number of turns, even though it probably doesn't make a difference at this point. Let's try it. One, two, no. Okay, well the, ne the nest ball has been my record. Yeah, 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 you're so charming, you're so cute. Pokeball, let's do it.
One. Ah, no. If this doesn't work out, it's okay. I can encounter it again, it'll be nighttime then, and I have tons of Dusk Balls that I haven't used up to this point. Maybe I should use one just for good measure, because for all I know, maybe this is working right now, and maybe it will catch it, but at the same time, if I'm using Pokeballs and whatnot, it, if it, if it might as well be a Pokeball, it can't hurt to at least try at this point. We'll do that. I think I'll try one more timer ball just before calling it, I don't mean to say call it quits, but I kind of am at this point if I'm just kind of doing whatever. Yeah, no. Why does this timer ball not work? And I'm pretty sure that in the next encounter, the timer ball gets reset. So I'm not wanting to just have tons of unused timer balls after I've made a battle last this long. One. Because getting back up to this number of turns to make the timer balls as effective as they can be, it just sounds miserable, so come on, Mesprit. I got three left. You can surely be nice to me for all I have done up to this point. I have helped you save this entire universe from collapsing in on itself. Not just from Cyrus wanting to recreate it, but also from Giratina running out of control and joining our world. So come on, humor me. Get in the ball. I guess my sprit's got high standards. I gotta save the universe at least twice before it'll see me as worthy. One, two. Man. I am fresh out of timer balls. Let's go for broke. Net ball it is. Nope. Can a quick ball on the 60th turn possibly do it for us where everything else failed? No. Can an ambiguous dusk ball save the day? No. Nest ball it is. Can the nest ball get even one shake out of it? Not even. I think I'm gonna run from this fight. I just, I don't have any other options right now. I don't know if that Dusk Ball would work. I would rather just not have to deal with it. I'm gonna voluntarily run. We meet again in exactly the same route. And I think possibly even on the same tile. Still shows up as evening in the battle? Okay. I have an idea. Hear me out on this. I feel like I got no other options left. The Quick Ball's maximum catch rate if used on turn number one is four. The Timer Ball's catch rate if used after turn 30 is also four. So this is basically another Timer Ball. One, two, three! Yeah! Okay, I made the right choice. After squandering about $120,000 worth of different balls, Mesprit is mine. When Mesprit flew, people learned the joy and sadness of living. It was the birth of emotions. No disgust, fear, or anger, though. They're saving that for the seventh generation. <laughs> I guess that all but confirms that, yeah, weakening it and then using a quick ball in a future encounter does work quite well. I have captured the guardian deity of my hometown, and thus according to the laws of nature, that makes me the new supreme ruler of Twinleaf Town! All four houses of it. I shall be the greatest ruler we have ever known, and build the unspeakable, a fifth house on its soil. I don't know. We've captured all three of the late guardians. And according to Rowan, there is a Pokemon gym that we have yet to challenge. Route 222 leads us right to Sunny Shore City. And next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're gonna head out that way. See you guys then.